I'd like to welcome to the show now the journalist Isabel Hardman, who's spoken very openly about her own mental health problems and the impact that's had on her ability to work. Thanks so much for coming in Thank this you. evening. Um, it's been well documented. You're a print journalist. Um, your battle with mental health problems, and you were fortunate in that your employer was very supportive, but your colleagues were very supportive. And I'm pleased to say you've been able to return to work yep. in full health. Yep. Um, how unusual is that kind of success? I think it's quite unusual still. I've been so lucky that The Spectator were so supportive of me when I was trying to stay in work and then when actually I realised that I needed to take full sick leave for initially for two months. I then came back too early, which was my decision, not my work's decision. And um, I then had to take another two months off and have come back on a phased return um, over, well, since June, actually, where I've been adding more hours each week and just taking on more responsibilities. And I'm not fully better yet, but I'm well enough to work, which is wonderful because I do genuinely love my job. And um, it doesn't actually help to be at home feeling like your life is passing you by. So to have had the help and support and the sort of regular check-ins that I get from my human resources department, for instance, has been so important. Obviously, this story is being discussed a great deal in the media today, and I've mm -hmm. seen from my Twitter feed another journalist this evening announcing that she's gone off on sick leave, but saying she has this incredible sense of guilt because she's not at home with her head down the toilet. There's no tangible sign to the outside world that she's ill. How hard is it for people to stand there and to be honest in the workplace and say, I'm not well enough to work, even though to anybody else, to the naked eye, they may well look it? I think people are getting much better at understanding that you just cannot see mental illness. I mean, sometimes you can obviously see signs of distress, people can physically sort of become hunched over when they're particularly anxious and depressed, but most of the time you can't. And actually, a lot of sick leave, if used well, is about being outside and about getting out of the house and doing things to help you as you recover. So I did lots of horse riding, for instance, when I was on sick leave because it's something that really calms me down. I could afford to do it, but it was a really important thing that my doctor was insistent that I kept doing. Now, to the outside world, this must have looked like I was having a lovely time sort of sauntering around Richmond Park, but it was a really important part of my recovery and slowing my mind down. And it was one of the things that got me back to work, along with the medication and the therapy. When do you think people are going to start taking this seriously? £99 billion pounds a year to the economy. That's almost double the uh, Brexit bill, the dreaded Brexit bill that everyone's so afraid of. I mean, it's costing a great deal of money. Yes, this report today has made such a compelling case, hasn't it, for employers taking this seriously. I think employers are realising that if they lose an employee to a mental health problem. First, it's not their employee's fault, it's just the same as if they succumb to a physical illness, but also they lose, uh, they lose money as a business and that's really important for them to work to stop someone having to go on to sick leave in the first place, but also to get them back. And um, I think that's important, I think this report's really good today, but the fact is that people can't access mental health treatment in this country, so all of the therapy that I had was private and um, I was able to afford it for a while out of my savings, but eventually a charity connected to work paid for my counselling sessions because I couldn't afford to keep them up And do anymore. you think that companies should have a responsibility? If their staff members are off on sick leave, given that the government is infamously not paying enough to pay for this kind of treatment, and not everyone has access to private mm. health care, should this be a responsibility for them? Well, it's primarily the government's responsibility. And the thing that I worry about as a political journalist is that Theresa May is coming out with very warm words and instructing employers to do this, that and the other. When actually she is the Prime Minister and she does have, albeit limited, power to change things. She could make much more of a focus on spending on mental health, on some different um, legislative changes, more money in the future, more of a focus actually on conditions that aren't just anxiety and depression. Because if you have, for instance, borderline personality disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, those therapies are even harder to get on the mm. NHS than the talking therapies that I think it's only about 15% of people are actually able to access at the moment. That's 15% of people who really need shocking. them. Yeah. Okay, Isabel Hardman, really good to talk to you. Thanks Thank so much you. for your candour.